Shared universes have become all the rage. Thanks to the rise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, everyone from the Harry Potter series down to comics themselves love to proclaim that they have the biggest and greatest interconnected characters around. Well, today we're going to take a look at one comic universe that I think is the greatest and most cohesive of them all, Hellboy. My goal here is that once I'm done, you will have a greater understanding of the universe and why this often overlooked world is the greatest among them. So without further ado... There's no doubt that the Hubble universe is massive, and as of this recording, it spans across nine different titles, amassing 69 trades and three original graphic novels. When looking at all the various titles and crossovers that are in the Hellboy canon, there's one thing that is in common. There is a singular vision. Hellboy is the brainchild of writer-artist Mike Mignola, and since the character's inception in Dime Press number 4 in 1994, Mignola has had a hand in everything involving this universe. Yes, there have been other artists and writers that have come and gone and left a mark, but Mike Mignola is the one that oversees everything. This singular vision is perhaps the greatest strength of this interconnected world. While the fact that DC and Marvel have amassed a total of over 100 titles on a monthly basis combined is impressive, this overbloated catalog requires a lot of cooks in the kitchen, with so many people writing different books and so many editors having to try to keep a cohesive universe, the results at times get, well, often a bit sloppy, which lead to inconsistencies and plot holes and oftentimes very poor choices with characters. By having only one figurehead that oversees the entire line and choosing to only release one or two titles at a time, it allows for a more focused and cohesive vision that is not bogged down by crossovers and the need to consistently hit a monthly schedule. This keeps the universe very tight and lends itself to being more accessible to new readers. This leads me to my next point. Perhaps one of the biggest questions that I get from fans across the world is how can I start with Batman, or Superman, or Spider-Man? While there are key runs that you could point someone to, the Craven the Last Hunts, the Dark Knight Returns, etc, etc, it oftentimes becomes a bit intimidating to start with a universe that has been going on since the 1950s. The beauty of the Hellboy universe is that you could literally pick up any of the titles, starting with Volume 1, and you will be perfectly fine. Each of the nine titles have their own personal feel. Books such as Lobster Johnson are pulpy 1920 stories, while books like Witchfinder deal with more occult and horror issues, and they are all designed in a way that you don't need to read any of the other books in the universe to enjoy them. While I'm certain this is something that you've all heard from Marvel and DC if you've been reading comics for as long as I have, trust me when I say that the accessibility is there. I've been reading Hellboy for the better part of about 15 years now and never once have I ever been intimidated into jumping into another book or another series that I've never started before because I know it's going to be accessible. This is due in part to the fact that there are so few books in the universe. This allows Mike Mignola to keep everything tight and keep it readily accessible to anybody that wants to start out and jump in. I think what's also really unique about the Hellboy universe is that while all the other companies are trying to cross over with every single book that they have, Hellboy largely remains the same. The books, they do cross over to a small degree, but it's nothing that is going to detract from your entertainment. When examining why Hellboy works so well, one has to look at the heart of the universe, which is its mythology. The mythology of Hellboy is one of the most wealthy and well-thought-out cohesive universes that I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Spanning centuries, various religions, cultures, and different folklores, it's truly impressive. Take for example this old hag, the Baba Yaga. A withered old witch, the Baba Yaga's origins stem from Slavic folklore, and as the story goes, Baba Yaga flies around in a mortar, wields a pestle, and dwells deep in the forest in a hut usually described as standing on chicken legs, or sometimes a single chicken leg. In the Hellboy universe, the Baba Yaga serves as a primary antagonist appearing at different points in Hellboy's life, with her most notable appearance being in the Storm and the Fury, when she aids Hellboy in reaching Nemu's tower in exchange for Hellboy's eye as retribution for Hellboy having taken her eye in years prior. This is just one of the few examples that span across the books where Mike Mignola is able to incorporate mythology into the universe, and surprisingly it all works and fits pretty well. Honestly, I could go on and on about the Troll Witch, the Wild Hunt, and Hellboy's very own legacy stretching back to King Arthur, but we could be here all day. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's kind of a cohesive vision across all nine titles in the writing. Well, it doesn't just span to the writing, it's also incorporated into the art. There are a lot of artists that span across all nine of Hellboy's titles. The 
art ranges from extremely impressive to, eh, it's okay. However, there is a cohesive feel across all of the titles in terms of the art, and it definitely should be noted. All of the artists are handpicked by Mignola, and since he is an artist himself and the universe is his creation, he has a very unique eye for discovering artists that have a similar feel and style to what he does, thus lending to a more tight and cohesive universe. The last thing we're going to touch on is Lovecraft. Now, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's just rolled their eyes out with me saying Lovecraft because, well, let's face it, it's everywhere. It's in video games, it's in movies, it's in pop culture. It's something that's been used over and over again, and to be honest, it's a bit played out in a lot of places. It seems like like the well has been mined dry of that material. I firmly believe that this is in part due to the monster Cthulhu and how pop culture has watered down the horrors that were crafted by the famous author H.P. Lovecraft. Honestly, it kind of saddens me to see such horror icons be reduced to mere cute keychains and t-shirts for mass consumption. However, in the Hellboy universe, Lovecraft's creatures are so expertly done and taken care of that they will send shivers down your spine during certain points. Creatures like the Ordu Jihad, who are serpentine crustacean entities which once resided on and presided over Earth. These beings are pitiless, chaotic, bent on destruction and subjugation, and often so horrific in appearance that the mere sight of one of them sometimes induce madness. Just looking at the description, it's plainly obvious where Mike took his influences from. Once again, what we see here is Mike taking established lore and mythology and incorporating it into the setting of Hellboy, and making it work into the universe that he has so lovingly created. When looking at the Hobo universe as a whole, it is truly impressive how much Mike and the other writers and artists have been able to accomplish while at the same time keeping everything so cohesive and not bogged down by its own weight. If you, for some reason, have not taken the plunge, what are you waiting for? Start with Hellboy Volume 1 Seed of Destruction and go down the rabbit hole to one of the best shared universes that you have been overlooking. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of content. I worked really hard on this, did a lot of research and all that good stuff. Uh, if you want, hit the like button. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. It's found in the description below. And if this is your first time checking out my channel, I do weekly reviews of hardcovers, trade paperbacks, omnibuses, all that good stuff. And please, if you want, check out my Patreon and subscribe. Get some exclusive content, and you'll also be getting the notes for this particular video that I worked on. Love you guys. Have a great week.